Hello, I'm Dr. Natasha Williams. In this episode of Clips, we are on location, and I will be interviewing Dr. Stephen B. Thomas, Director of the Maryland Center for Health Equity at the University of Maryland School of Public Health. During this talk, we will discuss the Health in All Policies Bill that was recently signed into law in the state of Maryland. I sat with Dr. Thomas and discussed how the Health in All Policies Bill came about. And you know what's so exciting is that the actual name of the law is the University of Maryland School of Public Health Center for Health Equity Work Group on Health and All Policy Act of 2017. <laughs> That's pretty good. And so we are now uh, working with the State Office of Minority Health to look at um, a framework for health and all policies in the state of Maryland. The law requires that the secretaries of the major offices in the state government be represented on the work group for health and all policies. And now the state of Maryland has passed a law to actually put a work group in place that will make recommendations and make uh, legislative recommendations to the state legislature for how to incorporate a health and all policy framework in all the work that's done. I asked Dr. Thomas to explain the goals of the bill. I think short term it puts Maryland on the map and our School of Public Health as a leader in policy change. That uh, if we're going to affect health outcomes and improve the health of the American people, we must do that in the context of where they live, play, work, and worship in their neighborhoods. And that means we cannot ignore neighborhood factors that might impact their chronic diseases. We can't just treat their chronic diseases or even the risk factors for their chronic disease if they're living in toxic environments. Uh, toxic whether it's from bad air or bad water or toxic in terms of exposure to violence. There are a lot of things in the environment, our social environment, our psychological environment, our physical environment that can impact health. And we want to bring those issues to the forefront uh, and not just a narrow biomedical definition. We talked about how public health connects with this bill and the populations it will benefit. Well, the University of Maryland School of Public Health, our Center for Health Equity, is an NIH um, center of excellence uh, supported by the National Institutes on Minority Health and Health Disparities. And we have taken that charge. It's one of the few uh, institutes at the National Institutes of Health that is not focused on a particular disease like the Cancer Institute or the Heart, Lung, and Blood Institute. It is focused on the population. And it puts um, population health and social determinants in the forefront. And one of the key components of the NIMHD portfolio is community-engaged research. How do we make the community a partner in our research enterprise? And here at the University of Maryland School of Public Health, we've been pioneers in how to build a trusting and trustworthy community-engaged research infrastructure. The beauty of this bill uh, is that it is focused on health in all policies, policies that affect everybody. This is really a rising tide raising all ships. But the, but the other reality is that with our GIS technology and geographic information systems, I can tell you right now what zip codes, what census tracts have the greatest concentration of people suffering from preventable illness and death. And so it makes sense that we would look at those geographic targeted areas Prince George's County, where we are right now, is one of those areas. Baltimore City is another. Uh, the eastern shore of Maryland and rural areas is another. And in all the areas I've just mentioned, suburban Prince George's County, urban Baltimore City, rural, the eastern shore, we have black people living in all those places. We have white people living in all those places. We have Hispanics and we have large immigrant populations. So Maryland's interesting in that we can address many different population groups that are affected by the policies 
of the state that will benefit from this kind of legislation. Dr. Thomas outlines the lessons learned during this process. You know, I think there are several lessons that come from the past decade of work in this area. And first of all, it is to stay focused on who we serve, why we're here. And that is the most vulnerable members of our community. Secondly, many of these communities have been victims of abuse in the name of science. They've also been victims of abuse in the name of predatory lending. They've been victims of food deserts. Okay, and so when we come in as a university and say we're here to help you, we've got some credibility issues. So, if there, so one of the lessons I've learned is that you have to take time to build the trust. You have to take time to acknowledge the history of a community and their experience. You have to validate their suffering. And most importantly, if you measure it, you've got to do something about it. So the days of just counting the suffering in greater precision or greater elegance or more sophisticated statistical models to tell people you're dying before your time is no longer satisfactory. But our most kind of innovative, interesting um, new initiative, which is supported by NIMHD and the Cigna Foundation, is to bring mental health services into the black barbershop and beauty salon. So we have actually renovated one of the barbershops to create the private space necessary for a counselor to actually do services. Billable services right from the barbershop. The barbershop is also a place where we can very specifically address the needs of men, black men, who many times are forgotten and left out in our efforts to improve health in minority communities. Finally, he provided an overview of what it took to turn research into policy intervention. Well, I think that one of the things that we have to do is um, communicate beyond our professional journals. Our professional journals are indeed important. They are the coin of the realm when it comes to um, advancement in these environments. But we cannot build careers on the backs of the people suffering. So it means that in working with legislators, we have to translate our data and our scientific findings into stories, basically. We have to put a human face on our charts and graphs. We have to tell the narrative of what it means to live in a food desert, or what it means not to have access to primary care, what it means to be afraid of going to the doctor because you're afraid of what the doctor's going to tell you. You don't want more bad news. And um, when we are um, testifying, and I've had the opportunity to testify in Annapolis on behalf of this bill and other bills, I learned that the legislators don't have a lot of time, and the way that you can really get the message across in addition to the data, is to have a story, is to have a personal a person, an individual, who um, reflects the very issues you're trying to solve. And in order to do that with any kind of authenticity, you must have a trusting relationship with that person. So you have to have patience, you have to find a willing legislator that can be a champion, and translate your science into legislative language, and you have to be in for the long haul. This is a marathon, not a sprint. That's the lesson I've learned, that we can get there with patience and staying the course. Thank you, Dr. Thomas, for joining us today. It's been my pleasure.